Welcome to Wonder Space. It's great to have you on board. My name is Steve Cole, and over the past 76 episodes, I have been asking the same six questions to amazing people from around the world. The questions orbit around wonder and stories of hopefulness, and the setting for each journey is this shared window on the space station, from where we see everything from a different perspective. Before we introduce our guest this week, our friends at AskNature.org are going to help us to re-wonder. In a Malaysian rainforest, a male treehole frog seeks a mate. His call is a single note chirp, and the louder it sounds, the farther it will reach, increasing the likelihood that a female will hear and respond to it. To give his call an extra boost, he positions himself in a water-filled hollow in the trunk of a tree and plays it like a musical instrument. Croak by croak, he adjusts the pitch of his call until he's found the resonant frequency of the wood, the note that makes the tree itself vibrate and ring out. Then his croaks become longer in duration with fewer breaks in between. The troubadour has found the right sound for the stage and his real performance begins. Our orbit this week will take us across Africa and to experience these views with us in this ultimate window seat, we welcome Amuti Binesa. Amuti is the Africa Campaign Director for 8 Billion, which is a project of the Resilient Foundation, enabling storytellers and filmmakers to take part in changing the world. Her own story is extraordinary and uniquely brings together the worlds of business, politics and creativity. The full-length interview with Amuti can be heard on the Wonder Space podcast which can be found on our website and on most podcast platforms. For this video orbit, she answers three of our six questions, and I start by asking Amuti to give us a glimpse into her life story so far, with an emphasis on what she is doing currently. I was born in Uganda, East Africa, and have lived in Africa, New York and the UK. I have travelled to 55 countries and worked in 35 of those for conglomerates, philanthropists and, you know, also been an entrepreneur myself. And what I've noted along the way is humanity's common need for meaningful connection to each other and also to the environment. I come from a family who are originally activists. So my dad fought for the independence of Uganda in order to... um, get the British to give us independence. And he was sent to to jail and all sorts of things and used to walk the street. And um, he became the first attorney general, wrote the first constitution for the country. And really, there were extraordinary parents that I come from. My mother was um, a theater nurse, but also a parent to seven kids. So that was a job in itself. And My parents are both from the, my father's from the kingdom of Buganda and my mother's from the kingdom of Toro. So both of them are princes and princesses. So growing up, there was an added layer of, you know, being responsible and being caring for other members in our community because we had a very privileged position. That being said, we then had to leave because again, my parents being activists, um, because of Idi Amin, they kicked off basically (laughs) and they weren't they weren't shy in making their opinions known and as you know a lot of people were being murdered etc during the Idi Amin days so we had to leave Uganda and that's the first time we left Um, and then when he was got rid of we went back Um, my father got made president and then (laughs) He was such an activist, though, again, even in his presidency, that he immediately went to the country to say, "Okay, we're going to have an election. And that was frowned upon by the powers that be. So he was cooed and he was cooed by the current president, which is interesting because he was his minister of defense at the time. Fast forward to when he passed away, he was one of the few presidents who actually got... um, a state funeral and when he was buried 
the day was declared a bank holiday for the whole country because of his fight for independence because of his you know real true commitment to Uganda and its people and the fact that he never looked to murder anybody he just used words the power of words and storytelling which is exactly what I'm doing today as it sort of happens so I'm currently by joy and great joy um the campaign director for a project called 8 billion which is being run by the resilient foundation and that is the charity arm of water bear affectionately known as the netflix for the environment so 8 billion was born out of asking the question how can we tell the stories of the 8 billion people on earth but from their personal perspective So our aim is to flip the content creation methodology and narrative across the world and try to build those stories of community resilience from the community perspective who really are the people on the front lines of climate change and the environment. Um we're starting in Africa this year because COP27 is in Egypt. This that's the climate change conference. So what's unique and what I love about this project as well is that we're gathering ambassadors from across the continent who will be our content creators what's exciting is that each content creator is going to be given the resources to be able to host storytelling workshops and try and upskill local talent in their communities so the impact goals of the project are not just to document the content but also a skills transfer education and training in order to build the next generation of storytellers from the grassroots level. Um so basically we're creating a digital community of atomic activists led by storytelling partnership and technology. <laughs> My story of hopefulness with a business is Water Bear. What they've done is by they've created this the streaming platform which you know about but it's also about impact you know there's no subscription fee there's no advertising because traditionally the film industry has been driven by advertisers what they want and also commissioning editors what they want and therefore the stories are, are built from that perspective i thought it was very brave that they started it in i think it was about december 2020 and in 18 short months they've managed to partner with 150 NGOs they're in 194 countries i mean if i could build a a platform for africa i think it would be on a water bear i hope um but the most important thing is that they've turned intention into action so you can have an intention to help save the planet but they've given you a way of taking action through advocacy through giving funds to these charities through volunteer all sorts of ways that you can actually engage and i think we only have one planet so how do you start a movement you've got to get people engaged from the beginning that's how change is created there's an african um proverb that says uh knowledge is like a garden if it's not cultivated you cannot harvest it so Yeah. I love what they do. For me, I always ask the question is what's our world and what makes our world? Today, people are all about the I. They're self-identifying it's all about me, looking on Instagram, all of that. And but if we come together, we I think we become our best selves as we've seen from this pandemic, you know? um and if we're in concert as well with all that is around us the world around us the plants the animals um then we're even more enhanced to become our best version of ourselves so i really think my wisdom is we need to move away from the i and move closer to the we because we've seen that that's the only way to go that's forward and there's also another african saying you know in africa we're raised on these if you want to go quickly go alone if you want to go far go together to find out more about the work of 8 billion go to 8-billion.org In her story of hopefulness, Amuti talked about water bear, 
which you can join at waterbear.com. To engage with the previous 76 Wonder Space episodes, go to our website, ourwonder.space. I want to thank Amuti for joining us on Wonder Space, and I hope you can join us next week for more wonders and stories of hopefulness. <laughs>